Good morning. Praise the Lord. Now, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you watching. I think I have a really good word uh, for anybody this morning, for everybody, uh, because I want to talk about how to live holy in an unholy world. And uh, I think this is such an important thing for every Christian, first of all, because the Bible tells us, tells us to do our best to live a holy life. And uh, in regard to it as well, you can't be happy as a Christian if you're, if you're going about this sinning. And so, and, and listen, as a Christian, you can, you can sin and you can even habitually sin, but God wants you to come out of that. And for your own happiness, your own contentment, for your own uh, reality of pleasing God, uh, we need to live a life defeating sin because Jesus defeated sin on the cross. And so we don't have to live in it. But first of all, before we get into that, uh, I don't know how much it shows up on camera, but my left eye, uh, I had a blood vessel burst in my left eye about a week and a half ago. And um, it just was just swimming in blood and it's taking a long while. I went to the, the eye doctor and he said, well, it'll just, the blood circulation will just eventually wash it out, but it's a slow process. I hope it's not bothering you too much. I've got this cap on trying to kind of shade that where it won't show up so much. Also, I've got my OU Center Red on. I guess you noticed uh, I've, I'm celebrating this morning because OU beat Alabama last night. Big, big win for the Oklahoma Sooners. Those of you that don't care anything about football, you could care less, but I'm a big a football fan, love to watch football, love the OU centers, and so uh, celebrating today. <laughs> and so anyway, we're going to get into the Word of God. How can I live holy in an unholy, sinful world? That's what we want to talk about. Uh, and, the, and the answer, some people say, well, you can't. You know, you can. Uh, you can live holy. In an, in an unholy world. And so I want to talk about that. We're going to look at some scripture to get started. It's found in Romans chapter 6, verse 12, 13, and 14. Romans 6, 12, 13, and 14. Paul says, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in its lusts, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin, now notice this, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace." You might ask, well, how can I do it? How can I, how, how is that possible? How can I do it? It seems like I'm defeated. Seems like uh, I, I just can't get victory over sin. And if that's your case, I want you to listen up today because although this is not a, comp a comprehensive recipe for living uh, a holy life or living uh, without sin in your life, I think I'm going to address some major things that can help you be victorious over sin. Uh, Paul says, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies and obeying the lusts of it. That you are, uh, it shall not have dominion over you, Paul says. And so if you are, uh, especially if you are living in your life and you have you have sin that just seems to come back and come back and you fight against it continually. Now, first of all, let me say to you, I believe that uh, sin, the temptation of sin and the 
and the the uh, how easily you fall to sin and sin's prevalent power in your life can be caused from a lot of different things. It can be caused by what you yield to. It can be caused by, I, I believe, by uh, your genetics down in your family line uh, that can be passed down. Uh, the number numerous things that can cause uh, sin. I. I I really believe that uh, the devil assigns demonic activity into people's lives to try to cause them to live in sin, never know Christ, or even after they become a Christian, that same demonic activity can continue to harass and tempt a Christian after you become a Christian. And sometimes Christians, over a, a large portion of their life, can have a, a, had a have an habitual sin that just continually tempts them and tempts them and tempts them. And sometimes, uh, if they don't know how to gain victory over that, uh, they they live in bondage or somewhat of bondage in their life to that sin maybe their entire lifetime. And, uh, and I believe, folks, the Scripture teaches that you don't have to live in bondage to habitual sin or sin of any kind. Paul says, don't let sin reign in your mortal body. When he says reign, it means to have power over you to where it's the king of your life. It's dominating your life. And so uh, we, we want to look at a, a couple of things this morning about how you can break the power of sin in your life or habitual sin in your life, and you can live holy in an unholy, ungodly world. First thing I want to mention is to live holy to live free from sin, you have to want to. That's the first thing. Oh, this is this is so big. You have to want to live free from sin. You have to want to live holy. You have to want to live a victorious life over sin. You have to you have to want to. Now, and this is a big problem because uh, the first thing in defeating sin is deciding that you love God more than your sin. Many people love God, but they also love their sin. And so, if that's you, you'll never be free from the power of sin in your life. Uh, it's called double-mindedness. And uh, James... The brother of Jesus actually addresses that, and I want to read what James says in James chapter 4, verse 4, and we're going to read that. He says, Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God, or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now look at verse 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. And in James 1, verse 7, he says, But let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He that is double-minded is unstable in all of his ways. And so... Uh, this is, this is one of the keys to those that can't break free from sin is that they love God, 
but they also love the sin that's in their life. And so, and they war against each other. The Spirit of God is envious, wants you to love God only, and, uh, and it wars against this sin that's in your life, but the sin that's in your life that you also love wars against the victory of God being able to come into your life and give you deliverance. And so being double-minded is, uh, is just, it, it just defeats your ability to gain victory in your life and to live victorious over sin. Now, doesn't that make sense to you? And if I'm, if I'm speaking to someone this morning, if you, uh, if you are under this bondage of sin, you love God, you're a Christian, but you constantly have the same recurring sin that, that, that defeats you. You fall to it. You can't get victory over it. I want to tell you, uh, I believe the, that the, the big problem, the biggest problem that you're having in your life is that you do love God and, and you've been saved. And I believe you are saved. But you have a sin in your life that you can't get victory over. And the reason that you can't get victory over it is because you love it. You love God, but you love this, and you're double-minded, and you're not going to receive anything from the Lord. You're unstable in all your ways. You love God. You want to serve God, but you have this sin, and it constantly defeats you, and so you're, you're just double-minded. You're defeated. You can't, you can't get victory in your life. Now, I have good news. You can get victory in your life. You can live, you can defeat this in your life, and you need to defeat it in your life. And God has made provision for you to defeat it in your life. See, Paul would never have said, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, neither yield your members of your body as instruments to unrighteousness. Paul would never put that commandment on a Christian. He would never say, don't let that happen if you could not keep it from happening. Does that make sense? I mean, uh, you, you would never be told to, to live in victory if you couldn't live in victory. You would never be told to live in holiness if you couldn't live in holiness. And so, uh, but, the, but the thing that keeps us in bondage is if we have sin in our lives that we just can't, get rid of. We, we kind of like, uh, when you're in that condition, you're kind of like the Old Testament nation of Israel when they had, they wanted to worship Jehovah, but they had all the, all the worship of Baal going on at the same time. You can't, we can't do that. We can't serve two masters. And so, so here's, here's the first thing. Uh, I have to decide that I love God more than I love the sin. I want the I want sin out of my life, and and here's the good news: God has defeated sin. Jesus defeated sin on the cross. Jesus said, uh, "He who the Son sets free is free indeed. You're free." thoroughly, completely uh, free from sin uh, it, because he broke the power of sin on the cross. Now, faith in God's word uh, releases God's power in your life. And I want you to look here in Romans chapter 6, verse 20, 21 and 22. It says, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. In other words, you're a slave to sin. You don't have righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you're now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. 
Praise God. Jesus said, I tell you solemnly that anyone who chooses a life of sin is trapped in a dead-end life and is, in fact, a slave. A slave is a transient who can't come and go at will. The son, though, has established position. The run uh, of the house. So if the son sets you free, you are free through and through. Now, that's in uh, contemporary language. So... God has set us free from sin. Praise the Lord. I don't have to sin. I, don't, I know I'm going to be tempted to sin. The devil may bring the same old demonic strongholds to try to tempt us to sin, but I don't have to fall for it. But first of all, I have to decide. I have to make a decision. I love God more than I love my sin. I want this sin out of my life. And when I do... Uh, I need to realize that God has broken the power of sin in my life. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, There's no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. Every man has temptations. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So here's what you must believe. Sin's power in my life is broken. I do not have to sin. I do not have to have the stronghold of sin in my life. The power of that stronghold is broken. It's been smashed at Calvary. It's been defeated on the cross. The blood of Jesus has set me free. And Jesus said, if I've been set free, I am free indeed. I do not have to sin. Sin's power in my life has been broken. When I'm tempted to sin, God will always, not sometimes, God will always, that's a big word, always, God will always make a way of escape when I'm tempted to sin. But if I love the sin, I'm not going to get free from it. I've got to, I've got to choose do I love God or do I love my sin? I can't, I can't coexist as a double-minded man. When you believe this fully, that God has defeated sin in your life, it will release God's power in your life. When you fully believe what God has said in his word, God has broken the power of sin. God has defeated the power of sin. I don't have to live in sinful bondage. I've been set three free by the blood of Christ. Amen. What a glorious thing. It's glorious, I tell you. When you will fully believe this, it will cause a release of God's power in your life to live holy. Amen. When you fully believe it, because when that temptation comes, the way of escape is to believe what God has said. I'm not, I'm not bound by sin. I don't have to live in sin. That bondage, that power has been broken, hallelujah, in my life. And when I believe God's word and I, and I say no to sin, then that is faith acting on the Word of God and, and the power of the Holy Spirit is released in my life. Folks, you can see this uh, throughout, uh, throughout God's Word. It, the, when we have faith in what God has said, I don't have to sin, I don't have to, the power of God has broken that and I'm not gonna live in that anymore. It, it's like the priest uh, when, when Israel was called to cross over Jordan and go in and take the land and the river of Jordan was swollen uh, from bank to bank and it was uh, a great current going down uh, and God said, you're going to cross over that. Well, they all looked and said, how can we cross over this swollen up river of Jordan? It's impossible. But God commanded the priest to take the ark of God and uh, and and the God and God said when the when the feet of the priest touched the water, 
Jordan will dry up. And you know what? It happened exactly like God said. There's always, there's always an action. The, the action is that you say when you're tempted with the same sin, you say, no, I believe God's word. Jesus said he set me free from sin. And I love Jesus. I've asked him to be my savior. He's a part of my life. I am born again in Jesus Christ. I'm not a slave to that sin anymore. And I say no to that sin. Well, when you do that, it's like the priest's feet going into the water. The power of the Holy Spirit is released. You know, the Bible says uh, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. If you're a Christian, the Holy Ghost dwells in you. He lives inside of you. And, uh, and, and Jesus, when he talked about the coming of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life, he says, uh, look, he says, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tear you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power uh, from on high. Amen? That's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Uh, John 1 and 12 says, but as many as received him, he gave his power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You're trusting in Christ. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power to be witnesses, but power to tread on serpents. Power uh, to be victorious, to tread down that sin in your life. You have the power, but you, we, have to, we have to want to, and we have to believe God's word. Amen? Oh, praise God. I hope this word is blessing you. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You have the power to live holy in your life. So listen, you don't have to be bound in sin. You don't have to be defeated by sin in your life. There's no fun in that. There's no victory. There's no joy in that. Oh, this life, this life with God is to be a joyful life. It's joy, Paul, Peter said, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Uh, we, we have victory over sin. Now, I'm not saying you'll never slip up. We're still living in an unredeemed body yet. The, our spirit and soul have been redeemed, but our body has not been changed yet. We're still we're subject to temptation every day, but you have been given. Jesus has broken the power of sin. Jesus said, if I've set you free, you are free indeed. Paul said, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies. Don't, give, don't yield your members to unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we've been, we're clearly told we can live victorious over sin. Learn to love God more than you sin. Ask yourself, do I love God or do I love this sin? This sin has got to go because I love God. Believe God when he says that he has broken the power of sin in your life. When that old temptation comes, you say, no, no, I don't have to yield to that sin. Christ has set me free. He has broken the power of sin in my life. I'm not to yield to that. I'm not to yield my members uh, to that. And, and I'm going to walk in freedom by the power of God's Holy Spirit and by the trust in his word. Oh, I want to pray for you today. Father, if there's someone out there, Lord, that has struggled and it seems like that there's sin that just comes back, comes back, and comes back. And they're just defeated, defeated, defeated. Lord, I pray that you'll help them to cast that sin aside, to say, I love God more than that sin. And to realize that your word, your word, it's unmutable, unshakable. Uh, it can never be wrong. It can never perish. Your word says that they've been set free. Lord, I pray that you would help them by the power of the Spirit of God right now to claim that, to walk in that, to be free, and to live holy before you. I thank you for it, Lord, in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, friend. I hope this word has been a blessing to you. And uh, uh, the Lord willing, it, uh, 
If you can, we'll see you next Sunday. God bless you. Thanks for watching today.